Hey guys, this is Jacob from Venture Addicts, and in today's tutorial, we're gonna recreate JR Alley's curtain transition from his latest New York City Don't Blink video. So unless you live under a rock, I'm assuming you may have seen his video. If not, go to his channel and watch that New York video first, then give the dude a follow and subscribe because he comes out with good stuff all the time. He's a master at sound design and his editing is on a whole nother level. Let's look at this one transition and I'll kind of reverse engineer exactly what's going on frame by frame. All right, so as we watch it on repeat, there's three videos going on. There's the helicopter panning up shot, the green screen hands, and then the hyperlapse that's been hiding underneath the original clip the whole time. So yeah, the first clip, he's in a helicopter, he is holding the camera and he pans up. And then the hands come in. And yes, these are green screened. Here's a comment from the man himself. Then there's this glitch that happens, but we're not gonna try and replicate this for two reasons. One, it's a plugin, or if it's not a plugin, it's a really complicated effect that needs its own tutorial to explain. And two, it doesn't really apply to the whole pulling the curtain effect. It's just part of his style. He has many visual and audio glitch effects throughout his videos. But it is worth noting right here, right when the glitch ends, his hands disappear for a frame and then they come back on and then the glitch is over. But you can notice if you look at all of his fingertips, they're all, you know, there. But after it disappears and comes back, they're all masked at least some of these right here. So what it appears he's doing here is masking his fingertips. So it looks like his fingers are going into like a curtain and he's pulling up, pulling out the frame just to make it look more realistic. Not really sure what he's doing here. There might've even been an actual green screen curtain that he pulled open, but I'm not too sure. And then he pulls it open and it looks so it looks so good. It's so seamless. It's just, you you feel it when he does this. this scene, that's why this scene is so great. I spent a few hours trying to find whatever is going on here. It's either a plug-in or a preset or some kind of light leak. And you can see these rays right here. Not really sure what's going on, but I just gave up and I made my own with my phone. I'll show you that in a little bit. And then he's got some turbulence warp right here. Um, you can see the light goes over his hands. Um, and then the, the city goes from exposed to normal. Just a whole beautiful sequence. I can only imagine how much time he spent on it. It's so well done, so seamless. So let's jump into Premiere and we'll do our best to replicate this effect. So here on the timeline, I have JR's clip and then a couple of shots I picked. The first shot is a drone shot. It kind of looks like we're in a helicopter and then just a random shot of me skateboarding. So we'll open the doors and boom, the skateboard will come out. So if I take a look at JR's clip and I start right before the curtains open, I can count how many frames it goes for and the effect only lasts about 10 frames. So I'm gonna drag up my drone shot, hold down shift and go 10 frames. I'm gonna cut it and I'm just gonna bring this back down cause I'm a little OCD. Now I'm gonna make a second copy, hold down alt and bring it up. And so now we have two clips of this last 10 frames of the drone shot. And we're going to have one half go to the left and one half go to the right. So click on one of the two clips and go to opacity and hit the square. And we're going to make a little mask. Hold down the corner and hold down shift and you should be able to drag it down straight. Just go out of the frame and then I'll just drag these way out of frame. You want to turn on your safe margins, click the wrench and safe margins. And that way you can see where your line is in the middle. All right, drag it around the middle. And if we hide this layer, you could see that we got one half done. Instead of recreating it, just copy the opacity, go to the other one and paste and boom. Now all you got to do is hit invert. And now we have this one. And we got this one. I'm gonna go back down to the mask and add a feather of about 50 to each of them. All right, now we'll kind of smooth in the edges right here. All right, next we wanna animate both sides going left and right. So make sure your playhead is on the first frame and let's hit the stopwatch of position for both of them. And then let's go all the way to the last frame and let's drag it to the edge until it's out of the frame. All 
All right. If you start your playhead right before the shot, hit I for in, go to the end for out, and hit loop. Make sure loop is checked. And this way you can have it loop and you can kind of review it, watch it a few times, make sure you're feeling it. All right, so let's add some natural acceleration to it. Um, using your keyframes, click on the first one, go to ease out. Second one, ease in. We could drag this all the way to the edge here and then toggle down this, grab the left keyframe, this little circle right here, go all the way down and all the way to the right. You when you let go, you should have a nice little ease right there. Let's do the same for the second. All right, so now when we play it back, we have a very nice seamless accelerating keyframe. And if we compare it to JR's, you can see it has a very, it already looks pretty similar motion wise. All right, for the next effect, we're going to blur and distort the drone shots a little bit. So for the first one, go up to effects and type in directional blur, drag it onto one of the clips. Now, if, let's put the blur length to about 50. And if you go to direction and look at your clip, you move it around, you can see it goes in the direction of the number you put in. So let's just do 90 since it's going left or right and we'll just keyframe it. So let's go to the last frame and hit blur length. Go back to the first frame and drag it down to zero and you should have a keyframe here on the left and the right. Let's copy that effect onto the other one and boom, let's play it back. All right, so you can see it starts to become blurry, just kind of giving it a motion blur as it moves. Now let's add another effect type in Lumetri color and drag it onto one of the clips and go to basic correction and we're going to keyframe the exposure here. Let's go up a few frames when the doors are opening. Let's hit the exposure stopwatch, go to the last frame and just blast it as high as you can. Looks like seven is the highest value and copy that effect onto the other one. Play it back and it may look kind of weird just blowing up like that. But when we add all the flares, it's going to look a lot more seamless. All right. For another effect, go back to your project and down here on new item, hit adjustment layer. Okay. And let's drag it on top of our two clips and just match the frames. Go to effects and type in turbulent displace, drag it on top of your adjustment layer. And if you look at your frame, it already has applied. Um, I think this is actually cool enough. I don't want it to do too much. If you look at JR's clip, it has this turbulent kind of similar look at the end there. So we're just gonna add that little extra effect there, just like he did. So instead of keyframing all these values, we're just going to adjust the opacity of the adjustment layer. Just like the lighting, let's go right when the doors are opening. Let's set this to zero. Make sure the keyframe is on. Let's go about five frames ahead and a hundred. Might be a little laggy. All right, if it's a little laggy and skippy for you, just go up to sequence, render in and out and let it load. All right, and we'll play it back. All right, so now we got the image kind of distorting, it's blowing up, it's going crazy. Now, before we add our flares and our light leaks, let's jump into the green screen effect. I wanted to keep this as amateur and as DIY as possible. I just went to Target and got a 49 cent green poster board and shot it on the camera I use all the time. I do have these four lights that really help. Uh, lighting's a big deal when it comes to green screen, but I definitely didn't do it by the books. But like you can see in this time lapse, there's not a whole lot you need to do to pull off the look. I'm also not going to go into too much detail about green screening, but it's actually just a one click effect if you never used it before. And yeah, there's some other little things you can use 
um, but I'm just going to run through it real quick and you can see my final result. All right, so up here we have our finished product of our ghetto green screen contraption. There are some shadows and exposed wall here, but I'll fix it up. So let's drag the clip down into here. And it is in 4K, so I'm going to scale it down just a little bit. All right, so let's go up to the effects and type in ultra key. Drag it onto the clip. And then all you have to do is hit the eyedropper and then select the green. And there you go. It's that easy. And you can see not looking too bad, not looking too bad. Now I did shoot in flat, so I'm going to color grade my hands really quickly. All right, there we go. And I also want to get rid of this part of the wall that made it in the frame. I'm just going to go down to opacity, hit the square, and it's actually small enough to just drag it right on top. And I'll hit inverted, and boom, it's gone. All right, so if I move it back and forth, there's kind of a transparency right there in my fingertips. You know, there's a lot of crazy settings you can play with. I'm not going to go in too much detail because I literally just looked up a tutorial online because this is the first time I'm actually using a green screen. But if you go to output alpha channel, you can really see all the changes that you make if you play with the values. I'm going to move my contrast up to 100 and that's going to erase most of the shadows that you see in my shot. Let me just render it again and we can match it with the sliding curtain. All right, that should be good enough. And when we play it back, it looks pretty in sync. All right, for the next couple effects, I'm going to keyframe the Lumetri color exposure and highlights to kind of make the hands brighter as they open the curtains. And I do the opposite for the skateboard scene where it's bright and then it becomes a normal exposure. So let's do the hands first. Let's go to effects and go to Lumetri Color. And I'm gonna start just a few frames in when the door's opening. Right there should be good. Let's go down to Basic Correction. And let's start a keyframe for exposure and highlights. Then let's go a few more frames in that should be good. And we'll just blow it out of proportion. Ooh, too much. Let's just do. That should be good. So now when you go back and forth, the hands become exposed. And this will look a lot more seamless when we add the light flares. So let's do the opposite for the skateboard. Now for the skateboard, let's have it exposed when it's pretty much halfway open. Drag in Lumetri color again, scroll down, basic correction, and we're gonna start with it super exposed. We'll keyframe it and we'll go a few frames ahead and fade it to zero. So let's render that and see what we got. And now as we play the frames back and forth without even adding light flares, it already appears to have the effect of light coming in from behind the layer. So it's pretty cool. So all we have to do now is add our light flares. All right, like I mentioned earlier, when he had the light flare coming in, I don't know if he used a plug-in or some light flares or light leaks he found online. Instead of searching for files myself, I just decided to make my own. So I got my flashlight on my iPhone and I went up to the camera and I just panned down the light to kind of, I don't know, just replicate a solar flare. And with a few effects, I think we can make it work. All right, so up here I have my fancy homemade iPhone flashlight solar flare. Um, I got this little clip right here, it looks good. I'm just gonna drag it into here. Now if you ever use light leaks before, all you have to do is go under the opacity and hit screen. And once it loads, all of the, the black in the image will disappear and it'll be nothing but light. 
and you get like this crazy looking flash if it would load. So I'm going to start at just a few frames in of the door opening. Uh, so it kind of just burst out, maybe faded in a little bit. Let's do about three frames. I'll uncheck and check the opacity at a hundred and go to zero. All right, cool. So now when we, we scroll through, you could see the lights just coming out super quickly and the hands are lighting up because we did the keyframe. So it's all coming together pretty well. Uh, before we render it, let's make one more copy of the flare. Let's bring up these top two layers first and hold down Alt and drag down that flare. Now we have one underneath the hands and above the hands. I think overall just blending everything in together for the impact. So after you render in and out and we'll play it back. So that's pretty much it. I hope I showed you some cool techniques that you could use for yourself. Check out JR Ali's channel. I'm one of many fans. I thought I'd just show you one of the effects he uses and send us any other effects you might see on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. It's the best way to reach us. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials. Peace.